Systems engineer Dr. Salish Rao, in his Climate Healers discussion paper, claims that animal agriculture is the leading cause of climate change, responsible for 87% of global warming. Let's look at how he derives this 87%. It comes from a rather simple calculation updating the 2009 figures of Goodland and Anhang, who were two World Bank environmental specialists. Their article in Worldwatch magazine claimed that farmed animals were responsible for 51% of global emissions. So let's revisit those figures. There were two main contested aspects to Goodland and Anhang's work. Firstly, their article included carbon dioxide from respiration or breathing of farmed animals as a source of emissions. Even though this had been proposed by a British physicist in 2005, many researchers, particularly those linked to industry, objected strongly to this. And secondly, they accounted for greenhouse gases over 20 years rather than 100 years as per United Nations IPCC convention. Doing that magnifies the impact of methane by a factor of three. These two factors attracted strong criticism from industry and related researchers. The case for including respiration is arguably valid, but let's put that aside for now. The case for shorter term 20 year greenhouse gas accounting is still a major source of contention. So why focus on the coming 20 years? It's obvious now that we are already living with dangerous climate change. So knowing the impact of emissions in coming decades rather than 100 years from now is highly appropriate. That's not to say that the long-term impact of carbon dioxide won't be catastrophic because it will. But there's a fix for that which is also linked to grazing animals. So what is Rao's approach? He adopts the Goodland and Hang figures with the exception of respiration, the most contentious issue, he discards that. And he removes overlooked land use because this is to be updated. Then he adds in foregone sequestration or opportunity cost. So leaving the land as grazing land has a climate cost. Or put another way, what climate benefit could we get from rewilding that land? And it turns out this opportunity cost is huge. In 2018, Timothy Searchinger of Princeton Uni, along with some European experts, found that the opportunity cost of farmed animals was five tonnes of carbon dioxide per person per year, or around 34 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year. That's about the same as yearly fossil fuel emissions. So if we were to rewild the land now devoted to farmed animals, that would sequester or draw down all current fossil fuel and industrial carbon dioxide emissions. Huge! So Rao's calculation looks like this. Take out respiration, update the climate opportunity cost, the foregone sequestration, and that adds up to 87% of global emissions, which Rao considers a lower bound, by the way. So there we have it. The 87% is simply an update to the Goodland and Hang figures, of 51%, with the contentious respiration deleted and the opportunity cost updated with Searchinger's numbers. So the only remaining contentious part is the use of 20-year greenhouse gas accounting, which can be strongly argued because methane causes far more warming in the first few decades than fossil fuel emissions. Skip ahead to video 9 on cooling emissions to see how that works. So animal agriculture causing 87% of emissions is arguably correct, I believe with far stronger supporting arguments than FAO's 14.5%. But the big difference between the two is the climate cost of leaving grazing pastures grazed. Rewilding grazing lands would have a profound impact on climate, soaking up all current fossil fuel and industrial carbon dioxide emissions. If we remove this farmed animal colossus, Nature will quickly fill that space, soaking up legacy carbon dioxide, initially fueled by carbon dioxide fertilisation. 